Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the Microsoft Flow Word Connectors. So we're going to use them to create a PDF invoice based on a SharePoint list. So here's my SharePoint list, and in it I've got an invoice number and some other data here. And we're going to take the product field and the amount field and add it into an invoice based on the invoice number and generate a PDF from that. So to do that, I've got a Word document set up here for my invoice. And in order to use this with Flow, I need to add some content controls. So we can do that in the Developer tab. And if you don't have the Developer tab in your ribbon, you can go up to the ribbon and right-click and customize the ribbon. And then you just need to make sure that the Developer tab is checked here. And you can press OK, and that should give you this tab right here. So all the content controls are right here. And to populate data into our invoice number, we're going to select that. And we're going to turn it into this plain text content control. So I can click on that. And you can see that we get that little box around our number. And we're going to go to the properties and give that a name. And that's how we're going to reference it in Flow. So let's call that invoice number. and press OK. And now we need to do the same thing for our invoice items. Now our invoice items are going to be repeating content, so we don't know how many items we have. But luckily there's a content control for repeating tables. So we can select the first row in our table and go up to the repeating section content control and click on that. Again, we're going to name it. Let's name it invoice items and press enter. And within the repeating section, we also need to add a content control for each of the fields. So we can select our description and insert a plain text content control and name that as well. Let's call that item description and press OK. And also for our amount. And we're going to name that too. Let's call that item amount. And press OK. And in this example, we're not going to worry about any of the other fields like the dates or the grand totals. But the other thing we're going to do is add in a signature. So we can add in a picture and we can then add in a picture of a signature. So let's go up and add in a picture content control here. And let's name that. And press OK. And I'm just going to resize this a little bit in the picture format tab. And I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio so that I can have it as more of a rectangle. And let's press OK. And that's going to fit my signature a little bit better. And now we're ready to go into Flow. So we need to save this in either SharePoint or OneDrive. And that mine's already saved in OneDrive. So I can just close out of this and head over to my Flow. And now what we're going to do in this example is create a Flow based on a button trigger. So we're just going to give our trigger an invoice number. And that's going to populate our Word document. And then we're going to convert that Word document into a PDF. So let's create a new flow and instant. And from our button and create. And let's add a text input for that. So let's call that invoice number. And the first step we're going to do is get our SharePoint data. So let's get items. And there's a get items from SharePoint action. Let's use that. And we can just navigate to our list. And we don't want to return all the items, so we're going to use the advanced options to filter our query. And we're going to filter it based on the invoice column. Now, there's a little trick here that 
took me a while to figure out, but the first column is actually referenced by title and not the actual name of the column in a SharePoint list. So, so we're going to be filtering on the title column and we're going to return data whenever that's equal to our invoice number. And because that's a text field in our case, we're going to add some single quotes around that. And now let's add in our populate word document step. And again, we just need to navigate to that template. It's in OneDrive for business. And there it is. And then that's going to return those content fields that we just created. So here's our invoice number. And for that, we can populate it based on our trigger invoice number. And then we have that repeating content section here. So we have the invoice items and item description and item amount. And if we know exactly how many rows of data we're gonna add, we can add them this way and create different rows for each item, but we don't know ours is going to be a variable amount of rows based on the invoice number. So instead of this, we're going to need to switch to the input, the entire array. So let's do that. And we'll come back to this later. Uh, this, this guy here, the invoice signature, we're going to first have to get our picture. So above this step, we're going to add an action to get a file from OneDrive. So OneDrive for business. And if we scroll down, we can get file content is the one we need. And we can navigate to our signature. And this signature is maybe something that you're going to be getting from uh, maybe a Power Apps pen input. In this example, we're just grabbing a single file from OneDrive. And here's our signature. And then in our Word step, we can add that signature with the file content. Now, after we populate our Word template, we actually need to create a Word a file based on that template. So we need to create a file. And then this is the file that we're going to convert into PDF. So let's create a file in OneDrive. And we're just going to add it into the same folder as everything else. That folder there. And then we also need to give it a name. So let's just call it invoice. So let's just call it invoice template and we'll call it populated. And here we need to give it the word extension. So docx. And the file contents is going to be from our populate word template action. So right here. And now we're going to add a step for converting that Word document to a PDF. So we're going to use the second Word connector, convert Word document to PDF. And here we're going to navigate to our file. And this time we're not going to select a file because it hasn't been created yet. What we're going to do is from the create file step, we're going to use the path that is generated. So this path has the folder and file name in it. And the last step is, so this converts the word document to a PDF, but we actually need to create the file as well. So again, we're going to add a create file step. for our OneDrive for business. And we're gonna put it in the same folders here. And 
we can give it a name of invoice. And you also need to add in the PDF extension, so .pdf. And the contents of the file come from this step here. So here's our convert Word document to PDF and PDF document. So you can save this. And let's just give it a name as well. And let's save. And we can test that out. Let's try it out. So we're not going to be populating our table data with the uh, SharePoint list items, but it'll do all the other actions. So we're just going to test that out right now. And let's just add in a number. And then it's going to run through all those steps. And if we go into our folder here, you'll see that we got this invoice PDF. And let's just take a look at it quickly. So here we have invoice number two. We didn't add that yet. We'll do that in a, in a bit. And here's our signature. That's pretty cool. Let's close that out. And let's go back to flow. And let's just uh, edit this now. And what we're going to have to do now is for this invoice items, we actually need to create a array variable with our data in it. So the items that we got from SharePoint, we have all the columns in our SharePoint list. We only need the two columns. So we want the product and the amount column. So if we add in the items directly in here, we're going to have too many items. And we also don't have the proper column names from our content controls. So let's go up to here and add an action. And we're going to create a variable for that array. So let's initialize a variable. And we're going to call it invoice items array. And it'll be an array. And initial value, nothing. So we're going to be populating it in the next step. So let's add in a set variable step, or rather append to array variable step. Let's use that. And we're going to be adding to our invoice items array. And we're going to be appending for each item in this get variable. So we actually also need to add the each item step. So there's apply to each step. Let's use that. And let's put this guy in there. And we're going to be using values from our get items. So let's add that in. And now the way to set up an array, we need curly braces for our array. And then we need the items in our array. So this one our first one is going to be item description, which is the name of our content control in our Word document, and then a colon. And then we're going to add that from our dynamic content from our get items. So that was called product in our SharePoint list. There we go and then a comma and our next item is item amount and a colon again and we're going to use the amount from the get items and that's going to be our array there now let's go back to our populate step and we can add that array in so invoice items array and let's save that. And let's test that out again. And this time let's try a different number. And run the flow. And 
there we go, it ran successfully. Let's head over to our folder now, and there's our PDF. So we can see that it uh, was modified at 10.30, which is right now. Let's open it up. And there we go, invoice number seven. We get all our list items here. And this one's quite long. It extends into the second page. Uh, we're gonna turn on something in our uh, document where we can have our headings appear on the second page. And there's our signature as well. Let's, uh, let's close this out. And let's just open up our Word document again. And if I highlight the column heading row here and go into my table design tab, well, it's actually in the layout tab, sorry. Then there's this option here to repeat header rows. Let's click on that and now it's selected and save our document. So mine's saving right now and close it out. And let's go back to flow and let's try that again. So let's just use the previous run for our invoice number seven again. And it ran successfully. Let's head over to our folder and oops, open up our invoice and same data this time around, but this time we get our column headers appearing on the second page. That's pretty cool. So those are the two new Microsoft Flow word connectors, and you can use them to create PDF invoices pretty easily that have repeating content in them, and also add signatures or other images dynamically. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.